Hello and welcome. Uh, another home game coming up against Oxford United. Uh, today I've got Andy in the red corner and Ryan as well. So, gents, thanks for joining me. Um, Andy, we'll come to you first. I mean, we'll touch briefly on, you know, the Peterborough game. We've at least sort of done, we all kind of saw that. But one note up. Uh, to be fair, after, you know, we were, I thought we were in the game. We competed well. Two goalkeepers pulling off some great saves each, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, one note up, sat back and down for the zone, doing individual mistakes and spaces up, uh, opening up, Andy. I mean, what we are check on the game, mate? Um, yeah, I've said on one of my uh, videos the other day, um, I think the old cliche game of two halves for me. Um, I, I thought first half, I thought we played really, really well. Mm -hmm. Some good stuff, uh, and it was good to see. Um, second half, well, after a goal, we, we, that was it, wasn't it? Um, we sent to stop playing like a team. Um, I don't think Collins uh, needs to take a bit of blame as well, uh, if I'm honest. I think he got things wrong. Um, Is that what plays what he's got available, or could he have done better, do you think? Um because he's I didn't questioned like, like some bench and he's like said, but you know, you know, he's questioned it and said, like, but you haven't really got an old game changer out or well he hadn't have he? No, he hadn't. Um I didn't like it when he brought both uh, front men off. Um to me, I think that's when things started uh, to go downhill. Um, mm. you know, the ball won't stick in anyway up front and it were coming back. Um no, it, it was just Overall, it was poor. Um, of it, 90 minutes, it was poor. Um, no. I think we just lack leadership um, at back, and I think that's showing that type at all. Well, Anderson has left at back. Um, all due respect to players that we brought in, I think that Lepata, I think he's a good one. Uh, uh, you know, I do think he's uh, going to be a decent player, but it's a lot to ask uh, for him. Um, coming straight into the league, uh, it's a big, big task uh, for him. And I just thought we were very, um, well, just naive in some places. Um, I, I, after the game, I was filming. It, 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 it would, it were really, really poor. Um, and to be fair, I think they could have and should have really had more goals. Um, comes to something when probably won it. Man at match uh, for me, well, probably goalkeeper. Hmm. Um, so, no, just very, very poor. And it's going to be a tough game tomorrow. So, uh, players need to be on it uh, from minute one uh, tomorrow because, you know, uh, Oxford's uh, a good team and they're on good form at minute. So, it's going to be another tough, um, tough game tomorrow, definitely. Ryan, just going on from that, I mean, you know, just highlighted via leaders, uh, kind of missing it kind of thing on pitch. Yeah. I'm looking at uh, certain things as well as you're looking at the bench. And for me, bench war, not, no disrespect to players on the bench, by the way, is that who's going to really come on and make a difference? Who's going to come on yeah. and drag game? I thought that once call went off, more than uh, what was, but I think when Cole went off, we sent him, we sent to lose out on his, his pressing, not weren't really pressing and concerning them. And I think yeah. one, once that happened, it kind of, it kind of invited us to sit back a bit more. And even players have come out of it because I know people were saying, you know, but we're saying different and saying, oh yeah, but we, we lost. Them. But when players come out and say it as well, what we're thinking and what we're seeing as fans, yeah, that's when you think, yeah, do you know what? Nicky Carroll's come out and said. Yeah, but we sat to all back. We need to learn. You know, we did like, similar to Bristol Rovers. So we're calling it as fans. We're not saying all oh, indifferent or all oh, wrong. It's just highlighting issues what everybody can see. So surely it's got to change. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We, we are we are missing Mads, but Mads, we're all like we said, Mads, we're always going, aren't we? Um, I just think it's going to take time for for Liam Kitchen to to grow into that role as captain. But he has got a lot of experience, Liam. He has got a lot of experience, hasn't he? He's he's played a lot of games in the championship and a lot of games at League One. So he's, he's he's full of he's full of experience. Still a young lad, but you know, it's up to him now to take ball by arms and, and and start and start leading this team. But elsewhere on the pitch, 
not that we haven't got really decent players because we have. It's just like you say, it's just that little bit of experience like we used to get from Norwood. Um, I'm, I was a bit, I, I was disappointed on Tuesday night. I mean, to be fair, up to up to a scoring, we played really well. First half, we played some really nice football. I was really impressed. We played some really good football. And then it, for some, whatever reason, it just changed after we scored. We just completely changed tactics. Um, you know, Cadden massively out of position for first goal um, down that side. It would have been at halfway line. And, you know, they pulled it back. He got it that gap, pulled it back and he slotted it in. And then goals two and three were just mistakes. You know, one front goalkeeper, which I can kind of half forgive him because it weren't, it were it were, it were an half clearance, weren't it? But he made two fantastic, I mean, he made some fantastic saves. So, Okay, give him a break. <laughs> but the third goal, we'll just diabolical defend him on it. Um, mm. And I think it's just when when Peterborough got back into that game, it was just lack of, lack of that leadership just to just to say, come on, we can get back into this. We've been playing really, you know what I mean? But to concede three goals in 11 minutes when you're up 1-0 at home against a good team, it's, it's a little bit rocky. But I'm not getting too disheartened because last season, we were in a very similar position. We had... Up until January, we had quite a poor bench. The amount of times we had conversations about who's going to come on and change the game in that first half of last season, didn't we? You know, we we're playing, we we're playing Jallo. We we're expecting Jallo, young Jallo, to come on mm. and and change the game when we were struggling all the way up until all the way up until end of October, probably later on than that. And it, you know, so I, I don't want to um, get. Do you think we have winning seven notes? Do you think? Yeah, do you think we as winning seven notes in first game put a lot of expectations on? It can do. I mean, it, yeah, a big win like that can 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 go go for you or against you, can't it? Um obviously the professional footballers and understand they're not going to turn up and win a seven nil every game, I'm sure I'm I'm sure. But hmm. um but potentially, yeah, potentially. But the new manager's in and I think it's gonna take time for I'm not saying we can make excuses for it to November before we clip, but you've got to remember we were we were there this at this point last season under Michael Duff. Especially the first few games. We kept saying, where's attacking coming from? We went away to Derby for the third game. We got beaten in with two one away at Derby. Hmm. And we just seemed to have nothing. We seemed to have nothing attacking wise. We weren't getting ball down wings, we weren't getting ball into area, we weren't doing anything. And it had been the same story for, for uh, uh, Plymouth, and I think it were for it Cheltenham at home when we won, when we won one nil. Yeah. It had not been yeah. great. Because it's just, you know, new players coming into the squad, new manager, new training systems, new... I think it'll just take a little bit of time. I don't want to give them too much leeway, but I think we need to give them a little bit of leeway. And we have got players to come back. Now, they're not world beaters, the players that are coming back, but they are good, experienced squad players that are going to be coming back and they're going to make his bench look a little bit better than it than it does, you know, than the lack of experience there on at the moment. And obviously, if we can add a couple more before end at winter, then... I think we'll be. I think we'll be in a good place if we can keep playing football like we did for you know the first hour on Tuesday. Then we're going to win more than we lose. Personally, Andy, just going on from that, uh, what what Ryan was saying there about playing good football and stuff like that. What I have noticed, I don't know if you have noticed, Andy, under Neil Collins he seems to be wanting to play a lot more possession based passing mm. football, not so much direct and. You know the long ball. Obviously, play it when it's there, and it's, it can make a difference. But do you think that with his uh, cotter bombing forward and Cadden, do you think it's leaving a bit more, is more vulnerable at the back? Because I can see certain gaps happening at back. Me, um, I can see gaps at back, but I don't think that helps with a minute Williams playing more or less centre back, which to me is not a centre back anyway. Um, probably inexperienced with Lapata, really. Um, and went back to two as a night war. You know, people were saying kitchens, mine were somewhere else with transfer rumours, and it probably was. Um, so, yeah, I think there is a few things at, at back um, that need sorting out. Um, yeah, we caught a uh, going forward, which. Um, Talk about Cotter anyway. I, I, I personally think he looks like a great player at the minute. Um, he, he looks skillful. I think he, he, he looks like he's enjoying his football at the minute. Uh, so that is a, a positive for me. Um, yeah. I, I think he's um, probably looking like one of our best players at the minute. Um, great with crosses. He takes people on. 
Uh, I know it's not brilliant defensively. If you could have like a mixture between Williams and Cotter, we'd, we'd have a, a good wing back there. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I just yeah. think it's a mixture at, at back me um, playing like I said, Williams a bit out of position and um, lack of league experience with Lepata. Although I do think he's doing all right at minute that lad. Um, I, I think he's been. I think he's been absolutely all right. He's probably been best at best at centre backs. He's been really yeah. solid. He gets stuck yeah. in. He's got loads of pace. Yeah, he, can, he makes good. He times his tackles really well. He gets. He gets a lot of them crosses away. I. I can't fault him at me, Casper. I think he's. I think he's. I think he's done really, really well. Considering yeah. that he was non league last season, he's been thrown into first team. I, I, you can't fault what he's done. You really can't. You know, he's, it, will he probably make mistakes? He's only a young lad. He probably will do, but. His his performances and as across those back three has been definitely been best of those back three for me personally. Yeah, that's what I, you know. yeah. but uh, I, I think it'll be even better if um, we we had a recognised uh, centre back at Sardinian rather than Williams. Yeah, to, yeah. To, to, with, also Williams that new French lad will be that the Givney will be starting. To, he should be starting because he came on, didn't he? So he, I, I yeah. imagine he's going to be starting. Yeah, can you imagine, I'll, probably I'll, think that that means it's going to be going to push Williams out to right wing back. Yeah. And then maybe bring Cotter on um, for a sub for um, for Williams. Yeah. Um, unless unless they keep if they think they want to keep Barry Cotter's attacking prowess on and put still keep Jordan in back three and take Casper out. Um, I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. I suppose, won't we? Yeah, I hope I, I hope I don't see Barry Cotter at Barbers because he goes to low Barbers where I do in could have. So if I see but if I drop him, Barry Cotter is liable to lynch me. But as a defender. I think that's his weakness to track him back. He can get a tackling and back. Attacking, not got a problem. He's got restricts at trade. I see Barry Cotter more as a winger, if I'm being honest. Yeah, like a right midfielder. Yeah, right yeah I don't forward, see him as a defender. Thing. And I don't mean it disrespectful. I, I don't, because when he gets on the ball, he's got the confidence to run at him. He's got the confidence to try it, cut inside and crosses and his throw ins. But as a defender, for tracking back, and like I say, if I see if I see if it sees me at Cudder for his head, they're liable to kill me. <laughs> but I'm just saying it, and I'm not being disrespectful because I do think he's, he's a player there. And, and absolutely, I, I, I've got a lot of time for him. I have because he's he's, he's come up and he's wanted to prove his and he wants the first team spot. Fair play to lad, he's young, he's still learning. And again, it's just his tracking back because I think he's, he's too focused on going forward. And like I said, when he does get on it, it does excite because. He gets yeah. forward, he's got some shot power behind shot. It's just he's tracking back because if it's too far up there, he's not one for really tracking back. And that's when I think when whoever's playing right side of central defense has got to cut across, so it leaves a bit more open. And it's just fine tweaking. And look, I'm being you know three games in, and it's like, oh Neil, it's some three games in and blah blah blah. I get back and he squirt goal, and I totally get that. But at the end of the day, it's just what I'm seeing. And but probably, I mean, Andy Sevier, a good player. And, you know, we all can agree. But he's not a bad player. But I just no, think his tracking back needs to work on. For me, if I, if, and again, we'll get on about his, his you know, team lineups about. For me, if I were, if I were going to play and, you know, Neil, because at times it looked like we're going to a far at back at some times from what game we're watching. And I'm thinking if you're playing that, you've got an ideal file for Cotter because I think he just play on right side me, like uh, like an added ammo on left hand side. I think yeah. he cuts inside and excite people. That's me. Uh, so yeah, Ryan. I mean, <laughs> gone off a tangent there, but going back to Oxford game, you yeah. know, look at you've touched on it briefly. We're on about uh, uh, I'm going to call him MDG MDG uh, uh, Gibney. Miles, well, again, Miles De Gibney. I'm sure we'll get it right at some point. De Gibney. We'll come up with <laughs> that some name does not name. lend itself to a Barnsley accent, does it? Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll come up with something like Givy or something like that. Uh, but yeah, but De Gibney, a player there that looks, you know, got decent reviews and that. Yeah. Coming on to Oxford game then, and we'll, I'll get the show on this as well, Andy. Come to Oxford game now. Would you make any changes? And if so, what positions and why? Ryan, sorry me. Sorry, I thought you yeah, said. Yeah, sorry, 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 apologies. Yeah, I would. Yeah, obviously, I'd start to give me a, a centre back, um, and drop. I'd drop Williams out to right wing back, and probably use Barry Cotter later on uh, with his pace against some tired defenders. I think him coming on fresh against some tired defenders would be great. But I'd push Williams out to right wing back because that's his. That's been his position at, at Oakwell for you know for like for the last few seasons. 
Um, in midfield, I mean, we're massively missing. We're massively missing Luca Conlightly, but I think I'd be tempted to to take um, John Russell out and put and put Phillips in and drop one of them back into that centre defensive role. Probably Herbie Kane, and then let Phillips and, and Styles, or even probably no, probably Styles actually. Probably drop Styles into that position and put Kane and and uh, and, and Phillips in, and then I'd probably put Dallas starting with um, with with, with Devante Cole. So I can see I'm you laughing, laughing now. Laughing at about Kane starting. Yeah, Kane starting. I'm laughing at about Kane starting. Yeah, what do you think? Is, yeah. By the way, before I get on to you, Andy, about this, we'll open it up. What do you think, pairing you about Herbie Kane coming out with his comments? Because I know there's been a lot made on social. But what do you, what do you, what do you reckon? Because when I looked at, it, I, I saw a frustrated, unhappy player that was speaking his mind, and I think he was speaking on behalf of a lot of fans. But I'll open it out to both uh, you and uh, uh, Andy and Ryan on that. What do you, what do you take a Herbie Kane's comments. Um, go on. You'll go first. I, I think I, I, I'm torn because I really like Herbie. I think he's a great player. Mm. But obviously, we transfer rumours circling about about him. I, I'm torn between the fact that is he is he being absolutely genuine that he wants the squad to get better, or is he trying to manufacture a move after what happened to Norwood when Norwood spoke out? That's just the pes- <laughs> that's just mm. me being a bit negative. You know what I mean? No, being a bit no, suspicious, cool. but. I mean, he's not wrong, is he? That's the no, thing. He, no. Whether whether his intentions are to get them move away or whether it's a mixture of, you know, if he does stay, he wants, he wants improvement, but he's also trying to manufacture a move away. Whatever it is, hmm. regardless of that, that aside, he is right. He is right. We do need a little bit more strength in depth. Hmm. Um, we do need... A little, I don't think we need massive. I don't think we need, like, a massive overall, but we do, I think we do need another centre-back in and I think we need another decent striker in. Hmm. Um, yeah. uh, you know, a decent striker at EFL level. Is what I is what I think. Yeah. Um, so he's not wrong. I just no, I'm just no. a bit I'm just a bit curious as to whether his intentions are, you know, does he genuinely think about that about Barnsley or does he feel or is he or is he trying to manufacture him away? Because you know when they asked him about his contract, he just said no. Yeah. Well, they asked you no, and he didn't look very happy about that at all. But yeah, it's too early in season to be talking about that, really. So anyway, I, I don't know, mate. I don't I don't I don't know. Um all I can take from it, regardless of his of his intentions, is that yeah, but uh, uh, you know, I think he's right. Andy, um, I thought it was refreshing to see a player um, be honest in interviews because sometimes they are a little bit, um, shall we say, a little bit scared of what they want to genuinely say. Uh, normally, skirt around it by not answering question anyway. Um, so, yeah, I'm well glad that you were open and honest about it. And it's more or less what uh, everybody's been saying anyway. Uh, we, we do need um, more good quality players in, uh, for me. Um, and, yeah, uh, it, it, when I, it I, personally, I think it was good to hear. Um, straight away when I heard interview, um, I said to you are fair, uh, Neil, Straight away, it reminded me of when um, Callum Britton uh, came out with yeah. stuff, um, but he went about with training and whatnot. Um, but yeah, like I say, it's good uh, that player, uh, a player like that is open and honest and it's what he feels. And yeah, you could tell that he, there is some frustration there. He's not happy somewhere. Um, but with transfer rumours floating about, he's... Uh, Again, he's probably looking to play to a higher level. Um, you can't knock him for that. Um, but yeah, he, he will 100% spot on for me. So assuming that Herbie Kane does start, or, you know, is it, obviously he's available, but so assuming Herbie Kane does start, you're starting 11, would you make any changes, like what Ryan said earlier, but, you know, would you see out? I'd agree totally with what Ryan uh, said. I'd put, um, I can't pronounce his name, we'll just call him French lad. Um, yeah, him. Um, <laughs> put him in. Centre <laughs> um, <laughs> back in place of Williams. And yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I've um, stood up for Russell, but it, it just looks so slow for me. Um, I'd definitely replace him with Phillips if Phillips is. Uh, up to speed, fitness wise, um, yeah, there'd be two changes and Mac. Um, I know Waters at minute uh, has not been looking sharp, shall we say? But 
and keep Waters and Cole up front. Really? Just, yeah, just just for experience, Neil. Um, okay. That's, um, again, I know it's early, um, and I do get that, and people all say that it's only third game, but yeah, it's not third game, Andy. <laughs> but we are sounding like uh, Roy Keane, whether it's third game or the thirtieth game, it's it dates the job. Um and Oli Shaw, I personally don't think it's ready. I can't see what he offers, if I'm honest. Mm. Um Dallas I know he scored that goal against Port Bell, but no, um to me, I think we've got to go for Waters and Goal. Wow, okay. It's all yeah. about opinions. It's yeah, all about opinions, isn't it? So um I'm kind of weird. I, I, I'm going to give me again, you know, for Williams and push Williams out at right wing back row. I think that showed us up and make us a bit more stronger. And it's no disrespect to Cotter. Man, if he's watching this and sees me, but I was liable to get out of Clippers and give me number one all over. Uh, but yeah, and it's no disrespect. But I think if Cotter does come on, I mean, he's got the pace, you know, we can do it. So again, there's that option there. Midfield, I get away with Russell. For me, I know he scored a goal. And he had a few chances, but for me, a I, I, frustrating player. I'd obviously we're missing Luke Connell, but I would obviously bring Phillips back now. Whether that would be putting Phillips up front and dropping style further into midfield to play alongside Kane or what, I don't know how that would work. I think Phillips would probably offer us more of a bit of a goal for it going forward because he always seems to be like a ghost and just driving right in around the box a bit more often. I think Styles possibly could be that bit of a creative bit of the midfield that we're missing. And Herbie Kane, he does the rough and tumble and ugly side kind of thing. But also, uh, he's got a pass on him like he did set up uh, kitchen, Kitchen's goal. So, I think that would be my midfield. But I would go for Devante and I'd go for Dallas. I'd, Waters, for me, is too similar player to Cal, uh, Devante call, sorry. And it's frustrating that as soon as we made the subs against Peterborough, I'd rather have kept what was on with Dallas rather than taking both off because I think Oli Shaw needs a low move. I think his confidence in that's not there. And I never really looked in last season for some reason. Um, and what, what I've seen him up to now, yeah, he can run about and that, but I, I'm wanting him, a ball back in net from him. I don't see that from him. Uh, Dallas, I think, is a goal poacher. He puts us in a bar, he's an hustle and bustle. He got that goal against Port Vale and he stretched well for it. And I'd love to see Devante and Dallas start. But again, the, you know, there's a culmination of things here. I'd like to see Barnes in most wanted man and see what's happening to him at minute, like at Leir uh, You know, he's not even featuring in cup games or I don't like that. And it's eyes paid or reports to be eyes paid member of staff here. So again, Mm. Why, why, he, why? What's happening to him? And again, why aren't we not here? You know what? You know he, if he's not wanted at the club, we've not rated him. Just get him out, pay him up, and get him off altogether. Because I think that definitely is asking at meeting it, tonight now. It needs <laughs> to I'm sure, I'm sure somebody like, will ask it. What are we doing with him? Because we've yeah. got a striker on box. I'd, I'd rather pay, pay him off and get him gone. Paying him a lot of money, but he ain't, he ain't getting anywhere near the squad. And it's like, no. yeah, but we need strikers. It, it's a strange. This must be something going on because yeah, we've got one on box. We know he can score goals. You know there's a decent player in there, but yet I mean, he's, not getting, he's, not, he's not even getting a sniff. And it's, I mean, if, even it, if you can't all that him well, it's, it's not what's happening. It's, it's not a bad job if you can get it, is it? A job like that. Not bad. Yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure I could do it. I know. I'm sure he wants to play. I'm sure he wants, as a prof, <laughs> you'd expect a professional footballer, he'd want to play football. You'd like to think so. I'd like to think so. You never know, some kind of uh, Saudi Arabian sign might come in for him for a last minute bid before transfer deadline day and offer us like about, well, I don't know, 10 bob and, you know. But yeah, I just, if he's if it's not going to be featuring for, for club or featuring under 23s or all like that, and even getting it bench for, uh, you know, Papa John's and Pizza Trophy and all that kind of stuff and, well, not Carabao now, but if you can't get in them kind of uh, setups and just go, please. Yeah. And just free, free up, but. Feel that, feel off, them feel wages, off, mate. And just get gone. Yeah, uh, feel them wages. Well, get whatever we can on a transfer because I think we're whatever. not going to recoup it out. We're not going to recoup what we paid for him, are we? No. Even if it's a free transfer, yeah. just get him off. Just but just just eight grand. I mean, uh, it's rumored to be around eight grand a week, and it? so, I mean, it's it's a lot Something of brass. Like that. Week one, mate. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of brass. Well, I wish I were on about a month, let like, alone a week. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, Andy, we've gone through his yeah. like lineups and stuff like that and all that. Uh, score prediction and, and who do you think will be the most influential, important player for us on day? Oh, um, I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna go for. Yeah, go on. Sorry, I'll go for two-one victory to the Reds. Um, oh, that's here, isn't it? Two-one victory. Yeah, and I'm gonna go for um, influential player. I think it's got to be midfield. I think Styles. For me, I said, don't say Leo Zeki for Christ's sake. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's 2 1 and Styles, then you're going on, yeah, that. yeah, 2 1 and Styles. I'll take that, Ryan. Um, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go one better because I think we're, I think after performance the other day, lads are gonna want to come out and, and, and give a decent performance. Um, and I think we, you know, I think if we play. If we play as we can, I think we go. I think we win this game. Although I have to say, Oxford are, are, are a different team this season to one last season, and they they've just We're had a fantastic win again at Derby. Where you can't. I mean, that's 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 a good result. That. Yeah. But I want to think. I think we're strong at Oakham when we play well, as we proved the other night for the first for, 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 for first hour. We're strong at Oakwell, even against even against top teams, and probably should have at least come away with a point if we'd have <laughs> kept playing where we were. But that said, I think I think three one Barnsley. I think most influential player, I'm going to go a bit left field and say Liam Kitching because I think he's been a bit, his head's been turned last couple of games. Hmm. Whether his head's been turned or his head's elsewhere or whatever's going on with him, he's not been, he's, he's not been, he's, he's not been himself. Hmm. And I'm just hoping he's going to come back and put in, you get, go back to, you know, old Liam Kitching that we know yeah. Yeah. and put a captain's performance in. And that's what I'm, I'm banking on and him doing that, mate. leading from back. Leading from back. Yeah, I'm going to go 2 1, same as Andy. I just think that after the performance, like what we've touched on here, performance against Peterborough, we were in it. We were competing with him. We got 1 0 one, no up. And it well, after that, he just sent to like, you know, what, three goals in 11 minutes. And it just like killed us. So I'm going 2 1. I think we've got it. The inf influential player, I, I was thinking about midfield area, but. Liam Kitchen for me, like you say, it has been turned with rumours and stuff like that, and you know, you, you don't go, know what goes off behind the scenes. But I want to see a captain performance because I think the other night we didn't see it. We, I don't think we saw any any leadership on field, and I don't mean that as a dig at any of players. We didn't. I'm not saying that we played badly on purpose. Of course, we don't do that on purpose. But when you wanted someone to be veered and be accounted for and when you're looking to a captain a captain as soon as it you know it, it made a mistake for a third goal it, it hands were up apologetic and it's over so deep down he knows what's done he didn't mean to do it but again it's like acknowledgement lads sorry about that so i'm hoping it's it's, it's like snapped out and it kind of thing and yeah let, let's let's take it via let, let the captain lead by example and let all the team buy into it so and again I'd like to see a captain in every area pitch kind of thing. Everybody should stand up. But if your captain's having an off day, you know, get behind him. You know, get behind as a unit. And I could see someone, I think I think that's where we miss that Luke O'Connell at, at times or a James Norwood. We miss, yeah. you know, them kind of people around him to, you know, game G'd up and get, you know, be there for him. Because when you've got young players around him, they're, they're pretty new to the club. Yeah, they're a player, but they're... You need that sometimes a bit of old old edit round hand on shoulder and say, look, get your ass in gear and book on. I think that's what uh, Anderson had with uh, Elick and Solbauer. Absolutely. And I think that's what uh, probably Liam Kitchen's looking for at the minute. So, yeah, I'm going 2-1 and I'm going Liam Kitchen, but uh, I think we all can agree that we're going for Barnes of Wins. All various things. It's not going to be a clean sheet, but then again, I think now it's, it's more about results. Uh, I think we need results. Yeah. Even though it's only three games in, but you know, fixtures will come up pretty thick and fast. Like you don't take long before you can like either go in one way or other. So let's keep it top ten side at the table at least. Uh so Andy and Ryan, thanks for your input. Uh enjoyed it. Said some good debates. As always, please like, subscribe, and share. Let us know your comments as well. Let us know about this score, the changes, what you make and reasons why. Um, we just want to win, get back to winning ways. And be interested to see what happens at the forum meeting as well. What comes out of that? I'm hoping that some questions get asked relevant, like you say, Leila Zeka, you know, what's ambition of that club? Are we going to be pushing for it? Are we going to invest any money into the club? 
you know, um, there's a lot of lot of stuff around it. I'm not just on about queues at half time. We all know what you know situation is with that, and you can pull a pint in like five seconds, six seconds. I want some questions. I'm hoping we get some needs answers. It's going to be streamed as well live. So all being well that people very, very do ask questions and pressing questions because we've all got best concerns at club, aren't we, at the end of the day. So I just yeah. want some meaningful answers. So Andy and Ryan, appreciate you taking your time out. As always, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. Um, have a good journey to work well. We're we'll back at home. Let's get back to winning ways and come. I was going to say five o'clock, but you don't know how much added time is going to be added on. <laughs> so it might be five o'clock or just after the, uh, five o'clock. Let's hope it's going to be three points for Barnsley and a win. Uh, one thing left to say, you Reds. <laughs>